Hello everybody, welcome to this next instalment of the Sparking Interest podcast series. Um, today we're going to be talking about something that we've not spoken about before. Uh, ASAP's membership is quite broad in terms of membership categories and one of the membership categories is distributors, of which we're lucky enough to have quite a few members who are distributors. So the gentleman sat next to me uh, approached me on the ASFP stand at the recent fire safety event at the NEC. And he took me to one side and said, you don't talk about distributors, you don't mention us, and I want to come and talk to you and all of the, view- the viewers for ASFP TV all about the role of the distributor in the supply chain. So how could I say no? Because, of course, the role of the distributor in the supply chain is is significantly important because the role of the distributor is about uh, relationships, it's about advice, and it's about service provision. So with me is a gentleman called Neville White who um, informs me that in 1980 he entered the passive fire industry. So uh, a quick maths... Uh, on that one is 42 years. So 42 years in the industry. So if there is anyone who's qualified to talk about the role of the distributor in the passive fire supply chain, it's Neville White. So Neville White, welcome. Thank you very much. Um, we're going to talk about distributors. Um, something uh, you you reminded me of that we didn't really cover yeah. enough of. Uh, and thank you for that because we, um, unlike certain um, organisations, we are open to criticism uh, where where we think it's uh, where it's warranted. So um, we we're happy to to engage on about the conversation about distributors because actually it's important because we have manufacturer sure. members, we have contractor members. So the contractor members effectively specialist subcontractor installers. And I'm sure both parties would appreciate uh, an understanding of distributors because, of course, you sit right in the middle of those two organi- you know, groups of, uh, of our members. We so, do. Yeah, we do. So very quickly, let's just, let's just have a quick canter through the, what your view uh, and, and your peers is. What's the, where's the value in the distributor in, in today's supply chain? Because... Of course, the internet has has devastated, to a certain degree, the high street. People can sell direct, people yeah. can order direct. Yeah. But of course, what, what you lack is that, that engagement and you lack that ability to be able to, to give advice. So where do you think the role of the distributor is now um, in, in 2022, believe it or not? Well, um, thanks. I, I think it's changed quite a lot over, over the years. Um, Having worked from the man, on the manufacturing side and now on the distribution side, I've been in quite a good position to be able to see both be both sides of that. Um, I think today the distributor, for me, has three key roles to play. One is to be able to provide information on products, provide the service to the supply chain that you've talked about, and being able to deliver the right products at the right time, in the right quantities, on the right lorries, all those type of things. I think that's one element of it. Second element of it is relating to the actual project itself and actually being able to provide the the complete project um, solution to to the customer. Quite often from a distributor's perspective, we'll get a phone call which is asking about one element, um, a board or a, a ceiling tile or something like that. And then, but they always will need the, the, um, the channel, the fixings, any insulation to go with it as well. So it's an important that you're able to offer that complete solution to the customer. And thirdly, and perhaps more importantly than ever before, is that technical knowledge and guidance that you can give to the customer as well. Because I think in today's market, we, 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 we know what's happened in recent times. I've lived through quite a lot of um, fires in this industry. Um, and, uh, and here we are today uh, on the back of the Grenfell one. Um, and people are looking at it even more uh, diligently than perhaps they ever did before. So therefore, I think as a distributor, we are quite often the, the, the last point of contact before somebody purchases, and it's about ensuring that they're getting the right products 
and if they're they're asking for something that we're not quite 100 percent sure about we can give some guidance about that as well mm. so let's just go back to the first point so in terms of um in terms of relationships with with customers i, I think there's this this the two elements to the supply chain uh, certainly within new build a lot of the products would be specified and quite often those products would be sourced direct from the manufacturer or certainly sourced by the uh, subcontractor that's been employed to inst- uh, yeah, install yeah, or, 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 or you know create that that um, that construction and they would either buy direct from the manufacturer or depending on the volume you know they would maybe come to a distributor so i think it's it's quite an interesting viewpoint that um, especially subbies are relying on, for instance, the manufacturer of a particular specified product to make sure that that product is suitable for its application. So it's got all the correct testing uh, results, it's got all the correct documentation, and uh, it, you know, hopefully it's a third-party certified product as well. Um, so that, that supply chain relationship would be quite often a, a, a direct one if it's been, if it's been specified mm. based on the you know, volume, effectively. Uh, but of course, when you get down to the smaller volumes, of course, the, the manufacturer may not be geared for you know smaller order quantities, um, and that's I think where the distributor role comes in. The other challenge, I suppose, is is where contractors are looking at the equal or approved um, situation. So certain products being specified, yeah. and uh, maybe the contractors looking to source a different product. Um, and I won't get into the reasons for that, but maybe they're looking to source a different product. And that then requires a level of due diligence mm. in terms of what the alternative product's performance is. So I'm assuming then the, the subcontractor will be looking for somebody that's got a level of knowledge that can advise them on that alternative uh, product. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think that's very very true. I think in the the construction industry, specifically relating to the fire protection side of things, I would say the majority of products are actually supplied through distribution. Some are supplied direct, um, but the majority are through distribution. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One is about having the availability of the products at the right time. It's quite often you don't get weeks and weeks advances to be able to, to supply it. They require it within a few days. Yeah. And it is this point of getting all the products as well. Um, but it is about breaking the bulk again, which is what you, what you talked about. Um, so I think that, is, that is, a, is a key part of it. You, you raise a good point about people coming on and asking about alternatives. I think as a distributor, one of the things at Encom, what we, we, we pride ourselves on doing, is saying that um, if you want an alternative, we can advise you what those alternative products would be, but it's your decision at the end of the day to actually go to a different product. When we would supply the information, provide the, the manufacturer's information, but ultimately it's your decision at the end of the day. Of course, we don't want to do that. We want to supply what we're asked for, which is why I think from a distributor's perspective, we all keep um, good ranges of products in and the ability to be able to, to, be able to split those ranges of products. And that's, also, that's, a, that's an interesting area to look at because, of course, you've, we've been talking about distributors giving advice, and, and rightly so, because quite often, a lot of, I'm sure a lot of our contractor members have a relationship or certainly a supply chain relationship with distributors where they actually are... The, you know they're the twelfth they're the twelfth yeah. person on the pitch yeah, yeah. Um, you know where they are they they do rely on them for that encyclopedic knowledge of a, a, a broad spectrum of products hmm. but I suppose the challenge will be is how moving forward and it is going to become more formal how do distributors demonstrate that they have um, can demonstrate they have the knowledge to be able to give advice because of course as soon as you give advice you enter the world of design with a small D or a big exactly. D. You enter the world of uh, professional indemnity because all of a sudden somebody further up the supply chain will so- says, well, you gave that advice. You, you must be part of the design team. And Mike, we get it all the time relating to things like metal, for example. If a manufacturer specifies their metal with their, um, with their boarded system 
and then you can't get hold of that metal for a week, two weeks or whatever it happens to be, what do you do? So you, you go back to the manufacturer and say, can I use this metal? As long as it's the same thickness, same gauge, that type of thing, can we, can we get away with that? And in most instances they will say, yes, we'll, and they'll give us a, a reassurance with some sort of backup document saying that we can actually do it. But that happens, happens day in, day out. Um, so yeah, it's, it, I think one of the challenges we also have as distributors is the people that we are dealing with aren't always third party accredited um, mm. installers. You've got a good percentage of the customers that we're supplying to will be buying products who, um, yeah, they, 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 they fitted that type of product before, but they haven't had people through the qualifications, gone through the, uh, the, the various CRTB courses, ASFP courses, whatever it happens to be, to, to, to be able to have that knowledge. And, and they call on us quite a lot to, to be able to supply that. So I think moving forward from a distribution perspective, I think we have got to upskill our staff more than we ever did in the past, which is why I think, you know, whether it's Encon, any other distributor has to have their people at least travel to, uh, uh, um, uh, qualified to ASFP level one, in my, in my opinion. And then you've got to have specialists within your, your, uh, your organisation that have got to level two and to level three on the IFE. Because if you don't have that and you haven't got that backup for people within your organisation to go to, how are they ever going to be able to give the right decision um, or yeah. give the right advice, not the right decision, give the right advice so to people? CPD is, 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 is common to manufacturers. And I think one of the benefits of, of, of them doing that is, of course, that they can also pass that training on to their official distributors to yeah. upskill their distributors because Absolutely. their distributors are a representation of them. If, if, if manufacturers have made the commercial decision to sell through a distribution chain using distributors, then there's a level of obligation to from them to distributors to upskill them as much as they can on their products. Totally agree. Totally agree. And that needs to be an ongoing program that happens relating to that uh, as well. Information is also key as well, Mike, you know, so that the information that the manufacturers are producing is to make sure it's uploaded onto websites, it's uploaded onto distributors' websites so that when somebody wants some information, they can go and find that information um, as well, I think that's an important part of what we what we do is, and I think I think we, what we try to do is when people are asking for a, a certain product or a certain system, we'll actually within that quotation try to provide the information related to that specification so that they've got all that information on not just only the performance but also how to install it as well, and that comes from a manufacturer. So mm. we we need all that information, but we are able to to give it out. So I think that. The, the there's a short message there really for, for any manufacturer that sells through distributors, yes. which is, yeah. you know, improve the knowledge and the skills. Yeah, definitely. To, to improve the behaviours of your distributor. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. The more you support the distributor, the more likely you are to be successful with that, that distributor. But and also... I think, yeah, I think the more you're talking to, a, to us as a distributor as well, the more engagement you've got. Um, the more likely that's going to happen and you're getting more involved with their products as well relating to it. Yeah, and as, and as the, the, the requirements of the building safety bill start to bite, mm. there is going to be a change in relationship between manufacturers and distributors in terms of the responsibility. Yeah. I, I, it's, 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 you, because you're, as a manufacturer, if you're, you know, if you're selling through distributors, even though you're one step further removed from the supply chain, I don't think will remove any level of responsibility. I, I think you can see that in in the outcomes of of some of the the content of the public inquiry for, from Grenfell is um, not knowing is is not an excuse or assuming because you're one or two steps further away f contractually within the supply chain is also not an excuse. No. So the manufacturer's obligation to support the distributor so that their products are correctly sold and that correct advice is given about that product mm. has to be paramount, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I, I used quite a good example actually and you referred to Grenfell there. Can you imagine if as a distributor we actually offered a product which wasn't specified? Somebody came to us for that particular project yeah. and we didn't have that in stock but we said, this will do the same, it's the same performance and we provided that and then that happened. 
where where would you stand related to that? So I think as a you know that's quite an important message that we do get across from a, from the distribution perspective is that it's it's not down to us, you know, but we can provide you with the information, but it's your choice at the end of the day, and you've um, you've got you've got to be the ones who make that decision. Mm. So with, I mean within Pacifier that the, there's it's a broad it's a broad industry. We we have products so boxes of twelve tubes oh. of this and boxes of six packs of that, uh, which are products. Uh, and those products are, are combined to create a, a solution. Um, you know, bat, board, mastic, you know, curtain. curtain, all that. Rock. <laughs> but then we have systems. So a system is, mm. is a finished product. So yes. we have fire, finished fire curtains, fire doors, fire dampers. Um, and and that's, a slightly different, that's a slightly different thing yeah. um, because, of course, those systems generally are, are tested as a specific system. Uh, how they interface with the building structure clearly has to be specified and they should be installed to that, to that specification. Um, but in terms of products, it's, it's, it is, there's, there's so many you know, products on the market that yeah. you can combine to, to create a finished solution. And that finished solution may vary from the individual product's performance. How does a distributor get, get through that that challenge of uh, because of course people come to a distributor and will say well I want four of them six of them and you may be buying half a dozen products which would have originally been made sure. by half a dozen different manufacturers and rather than go to all six it's all direct from that distributor it's available it's all on one bill uh, and and you know it's, it's not real life though, it's, is it? It, well sometimes <laughs> sometimes it's not yeah. but it, yeah. it, you know if you're buying it direct from the manufacturer it could have minimum order quantities could have long lead times and you they're raising six invoices against you instead of just one from from your distributor but how does the distributor get through that 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 combination request how do, how does that, how does the distributor uh, rationalize or and understand what's been asked of them in terms of of, of, of supplying those products and how they're going to be used. Yeah, quite often we won't actually be asked that question even though. So somebody may actually come on and if you're looking at a board fire rated product, for example, they may just ask us for the board. Of course, what are they going to fix the board onto? Yeah. And what are they going to fix it with? And is there any rock insulation in the centre of it that needs to be used to get the fire performance? So I think, again, it's important to be able to ask those questions to say, yes, I can supply you with this product but also you are going to need this, this, this and this, and can we price you relating to those type of things as well? So I think that's an important part of what we do. I think the other part that, that comes up with this as well, and I've seen it quite recently, is that somebody comes on and asks for a product, and they might ask for the, the metal framework to go with it, but my knowledge is that it's the wrong uh, gauge of steel, for example. So. You then, you know, is everybody going to pick up that? No, they're probably not. So you've got to sort of try and put that knowledge into people as best you can related to it. But it's being able to offer the right product. So it is the manufacturer's complete system. You know, if you're offering a fire curtain, it is the, the angle at the right um, size, the right gauge. And if there's any holes penetrating through it, then it happens to be you've got to provide the whole solution to them at the end of the day. And I think it's part of our... our as a distributor's responsibility to to point that out to people who are actually coming on buying product that you should be buying the complete system here and not just an individual item related to it. And of course you touched on the point, we do break the bulk because they don't always want a pack of 50 or a box of 12 or whatever it happens to be. So you do have to break that, that bulk down as well and to provide that on time. You know, there's always challenges you're getting onto sites these days because when you're delivering into city centres, especially into London, mm. you've got four silver, you've got four gold, time deliveries, right offload, all those type of things come into it and um, it can be quite a logistical nightmare. Um, and of course the customer wants it like yesterday as well. Of course, yesterday is, yeah. is still a day that's, yeah. uh, that's it, available. Exactly. Um, yeah. it, indeed, <laughs> yes, I can never quite figure where yesterday <laughs> falls in the days of the week, but it's clearly in there somewhere. Um, so if you had a... a um, a message to uh, manufacturers. What what would that what would that message be from a distributor point of view? I, I think from 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 our perspective is is to be able to supply um, in a reasonable timescales. You know, we're not expecting for manufacturers to supply us the next day, 
but within reasonable timescales and obviously deliver in full as best they possibly can. I think that's an important part of it. I think there does need to be some flexibility from, from them sometimes when they haven't always got the full quantity you want, but the customer needs it urgently. So being able to deliver smaller quantities, perhaps um, or during during runs when they're going to other people would, would, be, would be a benefit to us. Um, I think that's from the product supply side of things. I think from the technical knowledge side of things is to is to keep up skilling us and when things change when you bring out a new system you know for example i know that uh, uh, promat brought out a new detail for wind post protection quite recently so that information needs to be fed to us or rockwell did a new detail recently that needs to be fed into us as well so that we've got that information and we can give that to our people we can upload it onto our websites where people are actually going to go and find that information so i think they have a big part to play in 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 informing us um not just on the new things but also um upskilling us and training us yeah i i agree and i think i'll, I'll put my i will plant my asfp hat firmly on my head for this one but certainly if, if a manufacturer is an asfp member should they not be requesting that their distributor network is also uh, aligned Absolutely. to them in terms of membership? Because of course then that brings into play the fact that that distributor then has to upskill itself, not only with the support of that distributor, yeah. but with the support and the requirements of the ASFP. So yes. that way, it, it's uh, I'm not gonna go quite say it's full circle, but it certainly extends this this golden thread that yes. is, you know, people are. So I've not not seen the golden thread yet. I keep looking yeah, for it, yeah. but um, I've not seen it. But um, so it extends that golden thread between manufacturer and that next level of supply chain, yes. which hopefully then would extend it yet further into the that the, the installers. Which of course, if if that contractor member is an ASFP member, you then have ASFP member, manufacturer, distributor, installer. And then part of our one of the programs we're running this year is is to improve the engagement with the tier ones, tier twos, yes. who of course are the uh, are the principles to mm. the rest of your the rest of that you know supply chain's That's order true. effectively yeah. in one respect or another. Yeah. So I, th I think that 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 would be something that yeah if if we could if there was a message in there somewhere, it was if if distributors are gonna if, if distributors are gonna survive these quite radical changes that are coming through because I think they are going to be more radical in some areas than other mm. others and I think some people are still underestimating the impact it will have on their business um, but if we can demonstrate that actually not only are the manufacturers third party certified but the, the, the distributor base is and they're supported by that respective trade association and the manufacturers who are also part of that trade association and they in turn support the installers the yes. contractors yes then that goes some way to show that there is a competency pathway across the whole supply chain and that then gives reassurance totally agree with you you know to, to the tier ones and if you include in that things like CCPI uh, you know in terms of the in terms of the product listing and labeling and the, the, which you know clearly is, is needed uh, I think it's always a challenge from a distributor's perspective especially when you break bulk yeah and you're breaking pallets down or whatever, you don't always know what you've, you've, exactly. you've, you've, you've got there. At the end uh, and your, the cost of your label yeah. uh, purchases, oh, obviously, yeah, yeah. office world are going to be looking to looking very happy at you buy more labels to stick on things. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. So I think that's, that's one thing. It, if you had a message for other distributors, and of course, you know, these, these are other distributors could well be your competitors, but what, what would be your message to, to other distributors? Having been in this industry for quite a while, I know quite a lot of the, um, and the people in my, in my competitors and who they are, because quite a number of them have fire teams as well, which is, which is I think is, is, is great, because the more knowledge you've got out there, the, the better it is. And I think that's my major point I would be making, is make sure that you're upskilling your people who are talking to people about fire protection, make sure that you're doing that. Um, and, uh, and also make sure that you're getting them through the appropriate ASFP courses that they, that they need to do. But probably most importantly from my perspective is, is when you are giving advice, make sure that the advice that you're giving is, is, is to the best of your knowledge, but you're not taking the full responsibility for it at the end of the day. It's got to be down to the tested solution um, and that you're offering 
advice related to complete tested solution and not just what you've got in your warehouse and what you were able to sell at that particular time. Um, I think as an industry, we, we, we are improving, it is getting better, and I think we have a role to play in that as well. Um, and that role is to, uh, is to um, obviously supply products in the quantities they need it on the right lorries, all those type of things, but also to be able to give the right advice to people out there in the marketplace. Mm. I, th I think that's, that's, a, a very, that's a very valid uh, point, and I think it's, it's, um, it's an honourable thing to say, because of course you're effectively you know, giving, giving competitors advice, but I think it's about improving the standards of, of not only the, the global industry, yeah. but also certain sectors of it. So that sort of leads me on to the question, what would, you, what would your advice or what would your, what would your comment be to your customers? So, what, so contractors uh, and installers, what, what, would your, what would your sort of overarching advice to them be? Apart from giving us more time when they want material and, and things like that, and obviously having their accounts up to, uh, to date as best they can, we'll take all those things for granted. I think the, uh, the major thing is to, to, when they come and ask us about something, ask us about exactly what they're, what they're wanting. If they are coming with a named product that's already specified, that's quite easy because you're going to supply or you're going to price related to um, that inquiry you've got. If that's not the case and you're coming with more of a performance specification, we do need to know more of the information as, as, a, as a manufacturer would. So we do need to know the floor to ceiling height if it's a partition. We do need to know the fire rating if it's from one side or from both sides. Yeah. Whether it's E or EI. Um, we need to know if it's in the penetrations going through it. And actually being able to give us the full picture and then on that we can give advice and, and, and give the best answer we possibly can relating to the, the products and the systems that we're actually selling. Yeah, I think, I think it's, it's, all, it's about upskilling the, 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 the people actually on the, you know, doing the work um, because just to rely on a performance okay. spec, so 30-minute integrity, um, that's fine. I mean, that's like going to a car show and saying, I'd like a car to buy a car and, and they, you say well what are you looking for and they say well I just want it to be red uh, you could sell them a red Ford yeah. Fiesta or you could sell them a red Ferrari yeah. you'd probably find out that actually they haven't quite got the budget for the Ferrari but they didn't tell you that at the time they just said they wanted yes. a red car yeah. um, so I think just to rely on performance I need you know eight sheets of this board it's got to be 30 minutes I think application is becoming far more important. We get, we get asked all the time, can you give me a product that will do me 30 minutes fire protection and a ceiling in a duct, in a partition? Mm. You can't answer that no. question unless you're giving all the information related to it. So I think that's, that's pretty key. And I think going back onto other distributors, please make sure that you're asking those same sort of questions as well, because I think it's important that you do to make sure that we are upskilling and improving this industry that we're in because I've been in it for a long time. I've seen huge changes, probably more now than I've ever seen before. And um, I think we have a huge opportunity at this moment in time to improve the industry that we're in. I think there's some great th advances taking place, some great things taking place. Let's keep moving that forward. Brilliant. And finally, uh we always give people the opportunity. Uh, just to, we don't we don't want anyone ever leaving here thinking I wish I'd have asked this or said that. Is there anything else that you think uh, that we've not covered in this in this little fireside? Although there is no fire because yeah. it's quite warm outside today. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this little chat. Is there anything you think that's an important message to get across to the people watching this? Um, I, I think we we've got a, an audience here from from manufacturers and specifiers and contractors and distributors and the, the whole like on here. I think the message is we all have a role to play here to make sure that the um, the industry and uh, is, is as fire safe as it possibly can be, so we don't continually get um, fires taking place. You know they're happening all the time, aren't they? And restricting those to as uh, a minimal effect as they possibly could. So I think we all have a responsibility to do that. Just take that responsibility and. Um, look at the role you have to play as part of that and make sure that you're doing it to the best of your ability seeking the right advice from wherever you can seek it and um yeah that, you know it's a, a a problem shared is a, a problem halved is what they often say and i think if you can the more people you ask for advice the better it is at the end of the day
Indeed, and I think I think certainly there is an obligation for all of us to upskill ourselves. Yes, learning doesn't now end when you you finish school, uh, and I finished school uh, a very long time ago, probably a bit like you. Um, yeah. uh, so uh, you know, but we we learn all the time, and certainly uh, upskilling our knowledge and our skills um, is is going to be massively important for the industries. Indeed, not just its its credibility, but I think it's it's. If you're a business or an individual and you're looking at the future, if you do not invest in your skills and knowledge, you probably will get left behind. And I think that if, if there's one message that's coming out of the building safety bill is mm. the industry has got to upskill itself by yeah. virtue of knowledge and skills and, be able, and more importantly, be absolutely. able to evidence that. Absolutely. absolutely. I think in terms of... Um, the, uh, I, I've recently sat the IFE level three, and after not having sat in a uh, an exam situation for something like 25 years, it was quite a quite an interesting scenario to actually be in. But um, yeah, it's I, I think uh, it was encouraging also to see the amount of people who were actually sitting those exams. You know, so there was a, a lot of people in the exam halls where I was. So yes, I think we all have an opportunity to upskill. And to continue our uh, uh, our, our knowledge um, um, game. Yeah, indeed. So um, you made it onto the ASFP sofa. Uh, I have, yeah. How, how like was the it? Breakfast sofa. Isn't it? <laughs> it's not quite as posh as the breakfast sofa. Yeah, but we don't. Nice. We didn't quite have the budget for that. Um, so uh, there's there is there is a message to, to to our members, and and that of course is if you want to come and talk to us on the sofa like Neville did, uh, is um, you don't necessarily have to accost us on a trade stand, but it's, it's generally a, probably quite a good way of doing it. But, but let us know if you want to come and talk to us about important issues and subjects that are important to you or the wider industry or uh, our members. Uh, we're always happy to hear from our members and, and have a chat about uh, anything that's important in, in Passive Fire. Um, so Neville White from Encon, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for the opportunity. It's been a pleasure to see you, yeah, really and uh, and I'm glad you did get on the sofa. Um, yeah. And uh, hopefully it will all look good um, when this goes out. Excellent. Thanks very much. Nice to see you, Neville. Thank you.